of ISIS. This wasn't organized crime. This wasn't uh, drug lords that were working on this because that's the way they come at you. You know, they started uh, asset forfeiture essentially with the RICO statutes, if I'm not mistaken. They started that first and said, you know, that's the only way we can get a conviction against these organized crime figures because they're so wealthy, they can afford such good lawyers, they're constantly getting off. So we need to take their assets first. Well, then what you wind up with is after a couple of decades, you have this couple who is accused of stealing medical devices from the hospital where they worked. They took out a mortgage against their home, and then the cops seized the cash that they got from that mortgage. So then they still didn't have any way to defend themselves. I mean, I look at that and I say, well, if they really did steal all those medical devices, maybe they wouldn't need that mortgage against their homes to defend themselves. But that's the kind of dangerous situation that we get into when we allow ourselves under whatever justification to ignore due process and to allow the system to ignore it. That's right. And uh, David, I just want to point out that these aren't few and far between issues. As a matter of fact, the ACLU just sued successfully. Uh, there was a little portion of road through Texas in Tenaha County where it was found over a period of a, a short span of years that the same local police department down there was pulling over out-of-state license plates uh, drivers and they were targeting specifically blacks and Hispanics, seizing their properties. And there were a thousand of those cases where police seized properties without due process and without, it turns out, any any type of cause, uh, they were forced to pay, you know, some punitive measures for that and return properties in a lot of those cases. But a thousand, a thousand motorists pulled over for no reason except the police officers down there wanted to boost their revenues. Absolutely. That's a good way to put it. This is not a case of few and far between. We report so often on these abuses of police power and the new quote unquote rules of engagement that they have against the American public where they shoot first and maybe never ask questions. We report on that so frequently that there's really kind of a fatigue that sets in because we keep talking about it. It's happening over and over again everywhere. And this is something that's being driven by the federal government, isn't it? Yes, it's a U.S. Marshal's office and, and a Department of Justice program that started years ago. And it just filters down to the local level. And, you know, local police officers, they have dwindling revenues. So they look at this as just an easy cash way to boost their revenues, buy some new equipment, uh, you know, buy some more weapons, get some more training and so forth. And what's the biggest shame is that it rarely goes reported. There's been some investigative reports about civil forfeitures and so forth. But by and large, these things are taking place in your backyard without your knowledge, because when on when re, when police report them on incident reports, they're only reported as, you know, uh, the, they pull over a driver and it's a drug suspicion charge. So you don't really get the follow up that that people need to understand what's going on. You know, we just had a couple of Supreme Court cases come out uh, just before we went on air. Uh, the one where they said the police may not search smartphones without a warrant. And we also had a federal court come out and say that the no-fly list is unconstitutional because uh, it violates our rights to due process. Uh, how do you feel about those, those two uh, decisions? Do you think we're starting to turn in the right direction and why? Well, I, I would say the cell phone one was a little bit of a shocker based on the 9-0 decision. It's mm -hmm. very rare that mm -hmm. the justice, you know, and any Supreme Court reaches a 9-0 decision, especially this, um, you know, makeup of court justices. So I find that uh, very heartening in this in this battle we have going on in our nation to turn back the cultural and political tide toward founding father intent. Um, you know, that's one case. And you mentioned the other one. I'm not as familiar as that. That one. Um, but th those are two cases out of, what, 2,000 that we yeah. have going on in the nation. So exactly. I guess if you put it in context of that, the, the battle's far from ended. They still make broad exceptions for all kinds of confiscations and searches that I don't think are in there. And when we come back from the break, I want to talk to you about the difference between rights and against and privileges. Because we've seen this both from Hillary Clinton and the remarks that she made about a small minority who believes that the Second Amendment's about an absolute right that they're terrorizing the majority of Americans. And we've also seen Justice Scalia say that, hey, the Fourth Amendment isn't absolute. If it were, the TSA couldn't do what it's doing. Why is that upside down? So we're going to talk to uh, Cheryl Chumley. Again, her book is Police State USA. It's carried at InfoWarsStore.com. Great book about 
where we have gotten and maybe how we get out of this. So we're going to talk to Cheryl Trumley right after the break. We'll continue. How long would you last if all grocery stores cease to exist? Not in America. This can't happen in America. Because of my concern about our government, I was looking at survival stuff. I was raised as a Girl Scout, and their motto was to be prepared. Food for Patriots was an opportunity for me to be able to put some things aside. I said, well, this is a product worth having, seeing as it's so good. Like the pricing for what I got. I like the containers they were shipped in. If they keep in touch with you, you get your emails, you get your confirmations. The customer service is just absolutely fantastic. Plan on buying probably about uh, four more of these minimum. And it just came so quick. It came right when they said it would come. Thanks for supplying all this stuff for us because I think we're all going to be needing it in a very short time. Join over 50,000 Americans who have trusted food for patriots. Go to GetSurvivalFood.com to learn more. That's GetSurvivalFood.com. Man, when I get home from work, all Betty does is watch her reality TV and then she goes to sleep. I can take her on romantic dates, I get her flowers, you name it. She's just not the woman I married. Oh, Ralph, that's just awful. Does this seem familiar? Are the honeymoon days of your relationship long gone? If so, consider the abundance of chemical additives, pesticides, BPA containers, contaminated tap water, and other toxic substances found in our environment. Experts know our bodies are suffering and being thrown off balance, especially when it comes to your natural systems. Forget synthetic chemicals. Super Female Vitality brings forward key herbs specifically chosen for women's biology without the use of phony additives. Get your bottle of Super Female Vitality today at InfoWarsLife.com, InfoWarsStore.com, or call 1-888-253-3139. InfoWarsLife.com. Live life healthy. A sudden change in the wind. The day grows dark as ominous clouds move in and lightning begins to carve arcs in the sky. And you realize you are not prepared. I am telling you to yes, take, cover. take cover. The number of intense storms is increasing exponentially in the U.S. Tornadoes, hurricanes, flooding, and droughts are happening with greater magnitude and frequency. If you are choosing to rely on the government to save you... And no one's coming to help them. You could be dead wrong. The first step towards self-reliance in the face of disaster is a visit to My Patriot Supply. Com. There you'll find the absolute best prices on storable foods, non-GMO seeds, emergency water filtration devices, and so much more. All orders over $49 qualify for free shipping in the lower 48. Visit us online or call 866-229-0927. That's 866-229-0927. And speak to one of our preparedness advisors today. Remember, before it's time to survive, it's time to prepare. MyPatriotSupply.com. How can you save a ton of money and prepare for emergencies? By having your own in-home freeze dryer from Harvest Right. Now you can cut down on wasted food by freeze drying your leftovers. That's right. Create your own long-term food storage by freeze drying your own fruits, meats, vegetables, even complete meals with the Harvest Right in-home freeze dryer. Imagine the savings and the peace of mind. See how the amazing Harvest Right freeze dryer works at HarvestRight.com. Attention all radio listeners. Survival Life is giving away free credit card knives exclusively to our radio listeners here today. Visit MyCreditCardKnife.com to see this covert knife in action and claim yours for free. It's the same knife you've seen in the airline magazines for $29.95, but today it's yours free. Just pay shipping and handling. MyCreditCardKnife.com, MyCreditCardKnife.com. Go now. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and we're talking to Cheryl Chumley, author of Police State USA, a book that we carry here at InfoWarsStore.com about the burgeoning police state and the impacts. And why do we have this? What have we lost in terms of the understanding of our Constitution, of our rights? What have we lost in those terms to even have something like the police state? And just before the break, we were talking about this Supreme Court decision 
uh, aired just today, just before we uh, went on air, saying that police may not search smartphones without a warrant. And they're saying that cell phones differ in both a quantitative and a qualitative sense from other objects that might be carried on an arrestee's person. Now, unfortunately, the Supreme Court in many years past has given them a go-ahead to uh, search wallets, purses, notepads, which I think uh, are, uh, I, I, would, I would include that under the Fourth Amendment. But certainly cell phones, as I said, are quantitatively and qualitatively different, a massive amount of information. I wonder if the Supreme Court justices are starting to realize that they themselves are prime targets for being blackmailed for surveillance. I mean, we've seen David Petraeus have to resign. Uh, a lot of people raise questions about how Chief Justice Roberts would write uh, the Obamacare decision. He wrote both the dissenting decision and then abruptly turned around. Everybody was saying it was going to lose 5-4. Then he switched his vote and wrote the other opinion. A lot of us looked at that and said, hmm, I wonder if they found something on his cell phone or his computer to blackmail him with. What do you think, Cheryl? <laughs> we can speculate. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I remember that talk, but it, yeah. it, it is curious. And yeah. it, what what I think your bigger point is, it, is something that I, I think if all lawmakers and all politicians, including court officials in this nation, were subjected to the exact same standards and exact same laws that average Americans would, mm -hmm. most of this stuff would just go away. Yes. Just think if, if President Obama's daughters had to go through the naked uh, scanners at the TSA checkout points, how long would those scanners have stood? Exactly, exactly. And, and that's why I think that they're so concerned about cell phones. You know, we look at this and it's like, whoa, that's kind of an outlier, you know, especially as a unanimous decision that they somehow respect our privacy because that is something that does affect them, as you pointed out. We also have an article up on Infowars.com today, uh, overwhelming number of false matches to come from FBI biometric database. So, Cheryl, even though they're not looking at our cell phones, they're still tracking us. They're still recording our faces, our movements, and uh, all other types of things about us. And what the ACLU and the Electronic Frontier Foundation are concerned about is that those are going to generate false positives. And you know what happens if you get a false positive, you might get a no-knock SWAT team raid at your house, right? Yeah, and just ask a Georgia family how that no-knock SWAT team raid uh, goes. Their 19-month-old toddler is still in the hospital, yes. recovering from that flashbang grenade dropped in his crib a few weeks ago, blowing half his face off. You know, the, the police technology is something that I think all Americans need to really keep our eyes on. It's not just the uh, the government surveillance on, on social media websites and so forth and, and police. Um, you know, they're, they're getting the latest military-grade technology that allows them to spy and record on Americans who aren't even suspected of any crimes. And if that's not a privacy hit, I, I don't know what the definition of one would be. And a good example of that is this Stingray surveillance. I'm just amazed that even though the uh, Supreme Court decision has said that they cannot put a tracking device, they cannot place it on a car, now these police departments have said, well, that's okay, we don't need to place it on the car, we can use this new piece of equipment called Stingray where we can triangulate your position uh, using cell phone towers and other technology. We can, we can monitor where you're going and do that at will. And Cheryl, the thing that I find most amazing about that is that when they've been caught doing it, a couple of police departments have said, well, yeah, we can't get a, uh, a judicial warrant because we've signed a non-disclosure agreement with the company that makes this saying that we can't get uh, a judge's warrant. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? How, how is that constitutional exactly. in any definition of, you know, interpretation of our founding documents? It, it just amazes me what the federal government, the state governments, local governments, local police officers get away with now. And that's just a drop in the bucket of the technology that they have. You know, they have cameras and street lamps in certain uh, cities that record movements and, and even audio of uh, passersby. And what happens is they... They uh, send this video and audio to local police departments who scan all for the cause of rooting out terrorism. You know, I'm sure your readers and, and, and listeners and watchers know all about fusion centers around the nation and the data collection that goes on there. Uh, the reasons why, for how long this data is being collected, what it's being used for, nobody still knows. That's right. we got to go to break, but we're going to come right back and we're going to talk a little bit about fusion centers. And we're going to talk about the solution. And I think you've got the right ideas.
idea it's that our rights come from God and not from government. If you want to call in and talk and ask a question to Cheryl, the number is 800-259-9231. That's 800-259-9231 if you want to ask a question about the police state. We're on the march.